Hello again and welcome to the Franchise Everything podcast where we talk about everything and anything in franchising. And once again today, I'm at the Coochie Hydro Green head office in Chile, Canberra for a catch up with a bunch of franchise owners. And one we're talking to today is Kenny Chalice. G'day, Kenny. How are you going? Glenn, good. Thank you. Yeah, excellent, mate. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. And you, you weren't reluctant at all. You jumped straight in. Keen to do it. Keen to have a chat. Oh, I think I'm, I'm good for it, mate. Yeah. You're good for chat. Excellent, mate. Yeah. Excellent. So you are based in Albury, Wodonga, aren't That's you, right. with your That's business? Correct. So for those who don't know, um, what does Coochie Hydrogreen do? Coochie Hydrogreen, we provide a, um, a nutritional lawn program to mm-hmm. clients on a regular basis, about yep. bi-monthly or every, every two months, yep. eight weeks, um, which purely takes out all the, all the guesswork for the homeowner yep. or uh, business owners uh, with business frontages, that sort of thing, with grass. Give them a beautiful lush lawn. Beautiful lush lawn. We don't mow the lawns. Yep. We just is that sometimes ask people who think well, they do that? Well, it, it is a common question. Yeah. And no, we don't mow the lawns. Yep. However, we have a lot of contacts in the industry. Mm. We can help people out with that sort of thing. With their yard maintenance generally. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So now we're chatting about you and your your a bit of your business, but a bit of your career and yep. about the way that's led you to Coochie Hyde Green in as many ways. That's right. So talking off camera, but you've got quite a diverse and interesting background with the types of things you do. Yep. Now, we weren't going to go way, 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 way back. No. Um, so we're going to start with, you know, let's talk about how, you, how you've got to this business. So what are some of the experiences in careers you had? You told me you, you were doing in food services for about 10 years. Yeah, so. that's right. I moved to um, North East Victoria some well, 30 years ago Yeah. Um, with uh, my marriage at the time and we moved to Mount Beauty. Yep. In, and you said uh, that's near Falls Creek. Near Falls Creek. Yeah. Uh, in North East Victoria. And... Um, my my wife at the time was uh, she was in a, in the bank, mm. and uh, we were there for only a couple of years. She transferred into Albury Wodonga, yep. which is quite a big uh, provincial yeah, city, it's two cities right with on the border the, there. That's right, the Murray River running through the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, as time went on, I, I picked up a few diverse sort of jobs on the way, a bit of car detailing for budget rent a car at one stage. Then it yep. that moved into food service. Uh, the company was John Lewis Food Service. And what's food service? Food what's service. Food? It was uh, delivering uh, commercial quantities of food to restaurants, hotels, yep. milk bars, and that type of thing. Mm. Um, and from there, uh, I went oh, something involved there seven to ten years. I can't remember exactly. Um, I moved into Woolworths Logistics. Mm. They opened up a big uh, warehouse at Barnawatha in north northeast Victoria. Yep. So you had ten years in food service. You're saying. Years. And then 13 years in Woolworths. 13 years Woolies in Logistics. Woolworths. Yeah. Uh, starting, I uh, did a couple of years night shift there at the start. Yeah. Um, you love it the was night, a brand love the night shifts? Brand, sorry? You love the night shifts? Uh, They're real life. It was a bit of a challenge at the start. It was exciting. Yeah. Um, totally turns your world upside oh, down. Oh, yeah, the rhythm really, doesn't the, it? Really yeah, the rhythm. Whole and, body um, and everything. And, uh, yeah, my, my neighbour said to me one day in conversation, he said, you, you're starting to look a bit old, mate. <laughs> Wearing you down. And the night shift was, uh, that was the reason behind it. So mm. with that, I went to a day shift program mm. starting at 4 a.m. in the morning mm. till 2 o'clock. And yeah. I'd work four days a week. Yeah. So which would give me a three-day weekend. Yes. Uh, which was fabulous. But the first day of the weekend was always a, a catch-up and, yep. and you never felt really healthy and Mm. That sort of thing. So uh, as the years went by, I thought there's got to be something better. Mm. And uh, I'm a member of a Lawn Bowls Club at Wodonga. Mm. And so before we go on to that part, what, what what did you do in food logistics? So what is that stuff that you do? Uh, with, in logistics, with uh, uh, as you can understand, a, a warehouse for Woolworths, we, we used to supply, well, they still do, uh, over 50 supermarkets mm. with the, all their all their lines, their freezer lines, their produce yep. and dry grocery yep. products. Yeah. Uh, so the, the warehouse was a, was a massive warehouse, warehouse $100 million shed mm. uh, with some 450 people there. We'd, we'd store, the, store all the grocery lines mm. and then they'd be picked Distribute and packed out. and yep. distributed out to the supermarkets. Yeah, it's, uh, I think there's a fascinating logistic mm. planning thing behind oh, it. Oh, it was a big eye-opener? Yeah. It certainly okay. was. What, what jumped out at you most like what, from your memory? <sighs> Ah, uh, because I mean, many of us have experienced COVID with, you know, sh- stock outs and shortages, and under starting to understand mm, supply chain, like that term supply chain, everyone talks about it off, you know, the tip of their tongue today. Well, what I, the thing that always amazed me was the the, the cost that that the company could actually mm. bring individual cartons in and send them back out to the supermarket. For. Yep, what it would cost the company to do it. It was very very minor, but 
when you think about the big picture, yeah, they're dealing in millions of cartons every day. Yes. Yep. Okay. And so volume. Uh, yeah, volume. Absolutely. Yeah. So is it, was it the efficiency that really struck you off? Was it the efficiency, the enormity of the warehousing, um, and not only the the amount of people that work for Woolworths, but all the contractors mm. and everyone that was associated with it, just mm. just to get that one carton out of out of a delivery to the warehouse yep. and then back out to the supermarket. Mm. Mm, okay, so you did that for thirteen years. Okay, and you were you, were, you had the itch and you were looking for something else. Yeah, I got, I got itchy feet, and yeah. um, I always had a, a, a deep passion for gardening yep. in general. And I thought, well, I'd like to get onto the uh, maybe a city council on, you know, as a gardener. Yep. Uh, just to get into that environment, that role. get into the yeah. environment, work outside, work regular hours, work in your happy place. Yeah, in a happy place, mm. money. Money wasn't an issue. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, wasn't your I wasn't driving driven, factor? No, it wasn't the driving factor. Mm. So I was lucky enough to uh, be playing lawn bowls with a chap who was the director of Parks and Gardens mm. at Wodonga what, Council. Not what you know, it's who you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And I asked, I simply asked him, how would I go about getting a job on the Wodonga Council, Parks yeah. and Gardens? Yeah. And he said, Ken, unless you've got some tertiary certificate yeah. through, through uh, TAFE. Yeah. He said, you, you really don't stand a chance. You need to have a, a TAFE certificate, so the, whether it be a certificate right, one, right two or three. Yeah. That's your right to entry yeah. into, into councils. Nothing to do with you, the individual, but that's their, that was their uh, protocol yep. as to employing people. So I enlisted uh, or enrolled at Wodonga TAFE College. Mm -hmm. um, doing a, To get your certificate. To do a certificate three in horticulture. Mm. So that meant I had to do one day a week at the TAFE. Uh, because I worked four 10-hour days with Woolworths, that enabled me, that gave me that spare day. Yeah, a tired spare day. <laughs> An entire, a tired spare day. Yeah. However, I used to bounce out of bed on TAFE days. I bet, okay. I, I loved it. So um, you knew you were going down your path. I, I knew I was building on something. Yeah. I didn't know where it was going to go. Yeah. I had no idea where, where this was going to end up. Yeah. Um, uh, most likely, I wanted to get onto Parks and Gardens. Hmm. That was it. That, yep. that was my old goal. That was goal. still your, your goal. For, that was for my council. goal. Yep. Right. So um, I completed the 16 modules in the Certificate 3 of Horticulture. Loved every bit of it. Mm -hmm. um, so how long was over? that take you? That, that took me four years. That was four one years. day a week. That's a four-year commitment. Yeah. That was a four-year commitment. Yeah. But uh, if I was out of work, I could have done the whole thing in one year. Yeah, okay. Okay. So purely because I was working, uh, I funded my way through it. Mm. I didn't get any exceptions with it. Um. I'd actually um, achieved a goal of uh, logistics uh, trade and yep. transport mm -hmm. um, while I was at the food service okay. before Woolworths. Yeah. So um, I had that ticket in, in my pocket, but I, it just It's not something you wanted to do? No, nah, it wasn't yeah. really me. It was so what, a, a means to an end. So what makes you so passionate, you think, about um, horticulture and that? You, you jump out of bed well, and my, what was it about it? My, my mother, God love her, was, was, a, was, was a wonderful Mm. Little, little gardener, mm. and it and it flowed onto me, mm. and um, I, I just I thought, well, it's it's what I like. Mm. I can, I I understand it. Mm. Um, I absorb it. It's not difficult. Mm. Um, I'm not I'm not necessarily a technical guy. Mm. I'm good with my hands, but mm. when it comes to um, computer. Uh, that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you're telling me beforehand. You say, yeah. no, not a computer guy. I'm not a digital guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I like That's to. Right. Um, yeah. I like to get out and. Well, smell the roses, as mm. they say. Yeah. Mm. So what was um, – so, so you did the certificate in horticulture and you're at the Lawn Bowls Club. So because you're now four years into Coochie Hydro Green business, so there was a, a non-council thing happened somewhere along the way. Well, I applied for certain jobs in uh, not only the Wodonga Council but also adjoining councils to mm. Wodonga and I felt it might have been my age, might have been a, mm -hmm. a bit of an issue in yeah. securing a job with them, mm. with, was with councils. Hunch, was it? it was a hunch? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They never re really tell you. Uh, but anyway – I thought, well, here we go. I'm going to be 20 years at Woolworths. Mm. That's where I'm going to finish. Mm. Um, so I'm 60, I was uh, 59 at the time. Yep. And I thought the years are against me. Yep. Um, fit and agile. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a little bit disappointing. You felt, but, felt a clock ticking a little bit. Yeah. And I thought, well, what, what do I do from here? So um, it was a bit, of a bit of a chance phone call with my brother, uh, Chris, mm. who's – also in Coochie Hydrogreen. He is now. He yeah. is now. Yeah. He signed uh, to buy a franchise in 2018. Mm -hmm. So when when was the chance phone call with him? 
Um, as it happened, Chris rang me while well, yeah. well, I was talking to Chris, yeah. and he said, how long do you plan on being at Woolworths? And I said, oh, I don't know. Yeah. How long is the piece of string? Because you're searching for something else right now. Yeah. I said, I've, I've put in for council jobs. I said, I've been unsuccessful. He said, well, look, he said, look, he said, I've just signed to buy a franchise with Coochie Ida Green. Mm. And I said, Coochie, what? Mm. And he went on to explain what it was, and he said that uh, he knew Coochie uh, firsthand because he had a management rights to a, a resort in Noosa, mm. and he used Coochie. So he was a customer? He was a customer of Coochie. A customer of Coochie who bought a franchise eventually. That's yeah. right. Right, so he retired from the uh, the resort in Noosa, yeah. uh, and he moved back to Geelong in Victoria. He wanted to be uh, close to his family. Yeah, and bought a franchise. And that's where he bought the franchise. Yeah. He bought the first Victorian franchise. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then he, the one thing led to another. He rang me. I was very interested. Horticulture, like, everything. Horticulture, yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. A, a, a yeah. portion it's almost of horticulture. Basically falling in your lap. Yeah. So I rang um, Arnie Sienko. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was in around the October of 2018. Yeah, he's the CEO of Coochie. The yeah. CEO. Yep. And... Um, she led me through the process of um, purchasing a franchise. Mm. So you, you strike me as a person who wouldn't have had ma much hesitation at all or many doubts or at that time, no. given that circumstance you were you're no, relaying no, I, before. I, I, look, Glenn, it was a gamble, mm. like everything. Yep. Uh, it was the unknown. I, I was pioneering this in Orri Wodonga mm. and uh, – People just say, Coochie, what? I, we, you know, we don't understand what, what it is. And uh, over the years, people have, have uh, accepted what I do, uh, the vehicles, all that sort of signage on our vehicles. And, uh, yeah. Mm. So how, how's it worked, you establishing it in that market? Because you would have talked to other franchise owners. Is it, what, what's been the main challenges I establishing made, it? I made, a, I made a few initial phone calls to franchisees who'd mm -hmm. been in the, in the business, well, between five and ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, they all had positive uh, feedback and they said, yeah, look, you can't go wrong. Mm. Head down, um, get your marketing strategy right. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll know what works, what doesn't work, that type of thing. Mm. So um, I rolled the sleeves up and off we went. Um, the Coochie Resources Company give you a lot of assistance with marketing strategies and... Yep. Um, the like, franchisor, yeah. Gives yeah, that, the yeah. franchisor. Yeah. Okay, so it um, takes a lot of the stress out of it. Um, but effectively, you, you've, 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 got to, you've got to get up and you've got to get out there and you've got to push your mm. brand. There's no it, way around it, is there? That's, that's no it. other way around. They don't yeah. come, people don't come and knock on the door and say, I want you to come and spray my lawn. They mm. want to see you. They, they, they get a bit inquisitive. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I think that, that that is good in a lot of ways, that people are inquisitive about what we do mm. because it gives us the opportunity to explain mm. what we do. Yeah. Okay. Do people think you're, law you're mowing lawns and stuff? Initially, uh, initially, a lot of them did, and people still ask the question. Mm. Um, so this is a good reason for them to ask something, isn't it? It's a good prompter. That's right, mm. and that's, that's the old saying: "There's no such thing as a dumb question." Mm. Uh, but if someone says, "Oh, do you mow lawns?" I say, "No, I don't. This is what I do," and it just changes the whole whole conversation. Mm. And people are inquisitive and they're fascinated, and um, and it gives you gives you that that step into uh, actually going and doing an assessment and a quotation for them. Mm. So what's what's been the progression like? You've been in it four and a half years now. Mm. What's been the progression of the business? So did did you how did you get it up and running? Did you was it was it slower at first attraction in your from what your plans were, your well, hopes were, or how did it work? I started on April Fool's Day. Oh yeah. Twenty nineteen. So mm. I don't know whether it was a good or a bad omen. <laughs> uh, I had zero clients. I didn't have a client. I had a guy interested who had a um, he had a, a, a supermarket APCO service station yep. Yep. set up in Wodonga, which was really booming, and he had a big lawn frontage yep. nature strip. Yeah, and I just said to him, I said, I'm going to start this business. Would you be interested for me to treat the lawns out the front? He said, What does it do? I said, It gets rid of weeds, uh, keeps your lawn looking nice and green, and um, just nourished and, and healthy. Mm. Uh, and he said, well, he said, matter of fact, he said, I get audited, audited on the appearance of the service mm. station here. He said, it sounds like the go. Yeah. He said, when can you start? Great I said, well, as soon as I get everything in order, I said, I'll be here to start. So effectively, he was he was my first client. Mm. Okay. And, uh, you know, from there, I had three clients in 
three weeks. Yep. It, it, it wasn't beautiful didn't, numbers yeah, by it didn't any means. Yeah, snowfall. It didn't, yeah. yeah and it wasn't uh, there, was, there was a little, little bit of soul searching. I was going to say, what were you feeling at that point? Um, I thought, gee, have I done the right thing? Haven't I done the right thing? But I was always, I was always confident. I thought, I'm not going to, this isn't going to beat me. I'm going I'm to make this work. Mm. Okay. Um, because I, I don't have any issues with um, talking to people at mm. any level. Mm. Um, I, I get quite a buzz out of meeting different people. Mm. And uh, as I said, I said earlier, the um, the support from Coochie with their marketing and giving you different strategies on how maybe to um, encourage business. Yep. Um, placement of the vehicle was a big thing, and I still do it to this day. What do you mean, placement of the vehicle? Well, the vehicles have got nice signage on them. Yeah. Beautiful signage, and it's eye catching, mm. and uh, it's, it's it's our biggest business card. Mm. Right. So, if I'm ever getting ever stopped for any any, whether I might be at a, at a hardware store or whatever, I park the, the vehicle in a prominent position mm-hmm. where people have got to see it. Yeah, line of sight, people line walking of sight. past it. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a sucker for a coffee first thing in the morning. Yeah. And there's a, a coffee van in Wodonga at a big sports precinct, mm-hmm. grass tennis courts, soccer fields, mm. all that sort of thing. Mm. So I go in, I park my truck or I've got two vehicles. Um, either, either vehicle will be there most mornings. Um, before the the dew as goes a mobile, off the grass, as a mobile billboard. That's it. Yeah, and I get I get a lot of people. Yeah. They say, "Oh, you're, you're at that coffee van every day," and I say, "Yeah, that's right." <laughs> I so love coffee. It's working. Mm. It works. If they're asking why I'm there, mm. I know I'm being seen. So. so you were telling me that because you're not a digital person, the main thing, the main way that you grow your client base is just through good old face to face relationship networking, yeah. that type of stuff. Face to face. A big catalyst initially was the uh, Wodonga Bowls Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two hundred members there, mm. and I, I was, I was, a, I was actively bowling mm. um, when I when I first purchased the franchise, and I knew, I knew that my bowling days were going to be restricted moving on because I, I was prepared to work seven days a week mm. to get this up and running, um, knowing that the harder I put in early, it will back off and it will become. Yeah. A lot easier to because you've got that subscription, don't you? Once you get people on, they're on for that that run of it. That's right. Yeah, like a twelve month program. That's right. Yeah. So I use the uh, the bowls club to my advantage. They at bowls clubs they have a lot of raffles. Mm. They they meet raffles on Friday night. They the the raffles after Could men's the prize? on yeah. Wednesday. So I thought, well, I'm going to throw a few mm. things into the mix here. So I'd put a uh, weed treatment award mm. in, and it was always the last thing to be picked up off yep. the table. Yeah. Doesn't Never matter. worried me because yeah, yeah. I, I thought someone will pick it up, mm, mm. and sure enough, well, I, I, I probably I probably got uh, a good dozen permanent jobs out of out of doing that. Yeah. Okay. So the the, the guy or the lady would win the the coochie award, mm-hmm. right? A, a simple little free spray for your mm. weeds, mm. and I would use that opportunity to convert them into a lawn care mm. program, the bi monthly. Yeah. And what other all yeah. sorts of stuff do you do out and about? Okay, out and about, I uh, I sponsor a junior rugby league program mm-hmm. for the Albury Thunder. Yeah, um, I have the logo on the on the kids' uh, tops. Right, so there's something like three hundred and fifty kids running around with those mm. logos on them. Uh, what else do I do? Uh, not only the bowls club, the rugby. Uh, I've got signage. Yeah, so it uh, seems like in speaking to other Coochie franchisees as well that that local. Area stuff. There's a bit of digital, obviously, as well, but they were all local touch point of people seeing it all in around in football clubs, pubs, like mm. um, what is it, mm. mats on bars in pubs and stuff like that. Is a is a real common oh, thing yeah, people are doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've done that, the beer Good coasters person. and yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I I still think that the um, the word of mouth in my region mm. is by far the strongest. Oh, and you, you, I mean, probably no more more so than just about any other franchise that I can think of. In many ways, you're like a, I don't know, when you do work on a on someone's lawn, it's like a permanent billboard there for how good that lawn is compared to the guy next door or the person oh, next yeah. door. You can just see, like when when we've been out and about in Canberra, sometimes whatever you see, this is the Coochie Hydrogreen lawn, and you look next door on the other side of it, mm. it's, it's very mm. very different. Yeah, I love I love um, double nature strips. Yeah, where I've got the client on the left, let's say. Mm. And, and there's a line, line there. You can see a distinct <laughs> line, and yeah. um, there's no, it's uh, we, it's, there's no ink or anything like that. There's mm. no smoke and mirrors. It's yeah. generally what we apply 
improves the lawns. So so what are you loving about it now? So what do you love about the business now? You've been in it four and a half years now, so things change over time. You're super passionate about horticulture I, going into it. Has, it. has your focus and attention and passion of things changed at all? Or I developed? think I'm more passionate now yeah. than I ever was. Um, I've set a goal yeah. in my mind of how many clients I want. Can you I say have, that goal out loud? Um, I'm currently around 400 yeah. clients, um, give or take. Uh, because it is a game of snakes and ladders. Yes. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. So some finish their lawn program and they go, "I can't, I can't." Uh, it themselves. Well, there's, there's there's various things why people um, drop off or cancel mm -hmm. or they skip uh, their monthly treat or bi monthly treatment. Because it's flexible, isn't it? So you do. It is flexible. flexible. We don't have any in. lock in contracts. Yeah. And I think people need to really understand that. Okay. Yeah. Um, we offer a warranty with what we do, mm. but we don't have any lock in contracts. Yep. Which makes people breathe easy. Knowing that uh, you know there's no mm. no um, there's no gotcha moment. Uh, there's no gotcha. Yeah, that's right. You've got to do this or you've got to do that. Uh, there's there's been occasions where you know weather sometimes can can intervene. You know, it, it can be seriously hot mm. and windy, or it can be very wet. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's sort of either end of the scale. Um, and Mother Nature, we, we can't beat Mother Nature. Mm. So we work in the parameters between those, mm -hmm. and. Um, and, and give, we get great results. So what can you say your goal out loud? So you're at 400 odd now? Is there? Oh, I'd like to be around 500. Yeah. And that would allow me to have a full-time employee. Okay. Bring someone else on. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment. So you, you're running the one truck at the moment? I run one truck full-time. Yep. But I have a second. I have a, a smaller vehicle. Yes. Um, which I use for uh, specific, might, there might be just specific requests for a weed spray. Yes. Or yep. whatever. One-off jobs type stuff. One-off jobs. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, look forward to hearing the results as you get to that get to that goal. How long uh, do you have you got a time frame on it? I'd like to think. Uh, well, yet now, I'd like to think this time next year. Okay, we might yeah, check back in. Yeah. Well, well, let's <laughs> see. Uh, you know, it's always it's always exciting. I mean, if, yeah. if you don't have any goal to go for, well, it's uh, you know, it's, it gets a bit ho hum. Totally agree. Totally, agree. you've got to have something yeah. to shoot for, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Even, wherever you're at, something to shoot for is perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent, Kenny. Mate, thanks so much for joining us and telling no, the story. That's all right. Thanks that's been much. a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having thanks coming you. on board. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story with um, Kenny from Coogee Hydrogreen from Albury, Wodonga. Um, now, if you like what we're doing here and you like hearing these types of stories and like to hear more, please like, comment, subscribe, review, do all that sort of stuff there in whatever platform you're listening to this in, and we'll catch you in the next one.